Hello, tinkerers and time travelers. My name is TB's Guy, and there's a new animated short out for Legends of Rune Terra. This one for the new upcoming expansion, Guardians of the Ancient, made to promote some of the new characters that are coming to the game, specifically Zillion, Irelia, and Malphite. Um, and this animation comes to us courtesy of the Danish animation studio Sun Creature Studios, who are also the ones responsible for that. Absolutely gorgeous Spirit Blossom Yoni animatic that we animation that we looked at um, last year, two years ago. I don't know. Time is meaningless, but it was a while ago. There was a Spirit Blossom event in League of Legends. It is cinematic for Yone, and it was absolutely gorgeous and absolutely fantastic. This is the same studio responsible for that one. Sun Creature Studio specialize in absolutely gorgeous traditional 2D animation. And that's the kind of stuff I get really excited for, so I don't know. Maybe this video is going to be two hours long, or maybe 45 minutes. I can't say. It sort of varies by how excited I get and how much I decide to talk about. Anyway. When it comes to talking about 2D animation, if you're familiar with my channel, you will know this. We often talk about, well, frame rates, essentially. That's not really what's called in animation, but that's what I call it usually because gamers understand that language. Frame rate, which is the rate at which things are animated. For example, let me find a shot of Cillian here. This bit right here. As I frame by frame my way through, um, I'm here, 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 here here, here. This is each time I'm clicking forward. You can see that things in the shot move at different rates, like they move at different times. Here the coins are moving, but nothing else is moving. Here the hand and the sleeve is moving, but nothing else is moving. And each of these things move at their own rate. They are animated at different rates. And that's called animating, like typically when you talk to an animator, that's called animating on twos, animating on threes, animating on fours, meaning on every fourth frame, that the video is playing back, we animate another frame of animation or in every third frame or in every second frame. And usually when you look at something like um, a Disney movie, you'll get animation that is at 12 frames per second or animated on twos, which is at a 24 frame per second um, playback speed, every other frame will be fully animated. And that's actually an important term also, full animation versus limited animation. It's a distinction that's not as clear today as it once used to be, but basically full animation is the kind of thing that you think about when you think of Disney animation, which is on every single frame of animation, the entire frame uh, they, like the entire frame is redrawn. Like when the character moves, some animator has like looked at the previous frame of animation and then redrawn the whole thing and moved things along just a little bit. That's called full animation. When you watch anime, typically what you'll be looking at is, is a mix of full and limited animation. But a lot of the time you can spot limited animation in, for example, um, when anime characters talk, when there's a dialogue scene, often you'll get like a completely static shot of their face, like nothing is moving except their mouth is, is doing movements up and down while the dialogue is playing back, right? Same thing if you think about um, Hanna-Barbera cartoons, something like uh, Scooby-Doo cartoons, um, Yogi Bear, that kind of thing. What you'll get when characters are animated is that oftentimes the only a very limited part of the character will be animated. Think of Family Guy as well, where they have that, that one pose where they just kind of stand still, and then as they talk, the only thing they'll do is like they'll raise their arm and then they'll lean their body back a little bit. That's all cost-saving measures that are designed so that you don't have to redraw the entire frame of animation every single goddamn time you want the character to do any little thing. When you just want them to talk, well, just animate their mouths. If you just want them to do like a little gesture with their arm, just redraw the arm and don't redraw the rest of the body. That's the principles of limited limited animation. When it comes to modern animation, those boundaries get a little bit more blurred, and they certainly do get blurred um, with something like this, because a lot of the animation that we get to see um, in this thing is full animation. For example, uh, the best example in, in this short, for example, here, this movement by Aurelia. This is full animation. Every single frame of what Irelia does is completely redrawn from every previous one. Th like, this whole entire uh, choreographed motion is... Every part of her is redrawn on every single frame in order to move her three-dimensionally through space. And by the way, can I just say, holy fucking shit! Like, this is... Man! This is just a gorgeous bit of 2D animation because... In order for a three, uh, for a 2D artist to do this, they essentially have to be 3D artists in their head. Because in order to animate Irelia, like, making these really complicated movements, diving forward into the frame towards the camera, 
being foreshortened so like you can see her feet disappear and then they reappear behind her body there as her body is rotating in space and then go into this twisty motion where her hip is counter turning with her torso and like the arms are leading the movement around you setting up that spin of the movement with the hair whipping it around and like these big curving arcs all over the place making the body follow its own curve of momentum naturally like the animator who works on this has to have in their head an incredibly detailed sense of the three-dimensionality of this two-dimensional drawing. They have to have in their head a really well-developed understanding of Irelia's particular anatomy, her shapes, how they all fit together, and how they all move together. Like, that you can only twist Irelia's upper torso so much before it begins to look quite unnatural, that you can only break the character model so much before it begins to look really weird and strange. And so to get, like, this double spinning motion like where you can see like the thigh here leads around spins there gets twisted down under her body comes up on the left right like just spins around under there and that ah, god that's a really fucking complicated piece of animation and this is full animation now it's not playing back at 24 frames per second as you can see in fact i think uh, at the beginning here we're moving at one yeah here it's animated on threes which makes sense when it's such a complicated piece of motion um, that you might not want to do that on every single freaking frame. Here it's animated on threes, um, which means that every third frame of the video playing back, there's a piece of animation happening. And as we get into the jump, uh, we start animating on... Yeah, still animating on threes, animating on twos every once in a while. Um, but it's full animation because every part of her body is moving. Compare and contrast that with this shot right here. So here... The only thing that this character needs to do, right? They need to shake their head a little bit. They, they just kind of go, uh, oh no, Noxians are coming back, right? So we don't redraw the entire freaking body for that. Like we don't, like we have digital tools. Uh, we don't need to redraw the entire, wait, hang on. Am I seeing boil? Hang on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was making a point, but I may have been wrong. Hang on. Wait just one stinking minute, Sun Creature Studios. Hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. No, you didn't. You did not. You... Why would you? No. No. Really? Real? You redrew? Okay, so the thing I'm seeing here, you can see that little bit of boil on the lines. I don't know if it's just the video compression. It could just be the video compression messing with the thickness of the lines. But what it looks like is that some animator actually redrew... I mean, obviously they must have traced over the old character, but... That boil makes it look like they redrew the whole character just for the head. I was making a point and you ruined it, Sun Creature Studios! Why are you so extra? Okay. <laughs> right, so the point I wanted to make is that when the character only needs to do this tiny little itty bitty head shake, there's no reason to animate the entire freaking body, so we only animate the bits of the head that need to do the shaking. But because this is Sun Creature Studios and they're crazy people, I guess, it seems they redrew the whole thing frame by frame, <laughs> even in spite of the fact that it's not moving, because you're lunatics, madmen. Okay, that's very, very cool. Also, why? Why did you do that? <laughs> It's cool. It's extremely cool, but huh? Okay, it just ruined my point for me. Anyway, the point stands that that's what limited animation does, and in modern animation, usually there is not such a clear divide between full and limited animation because full animation will often take advantage of the same techniques as limited animation, i.e., only animating such bits of the character as need to be animated, and in limited animation formats like anime. Like, we have Sakuga. We still have sequences in anime shows that are... that dive deep into full animation for that, like, big, impressive, impactful look. Anyway, goddamn, that threw me off. Um, so one thing, for example, you can see with this character right here is that as he's turning his head, or they're turning their head, um, to look at their companion back here, you can see that the whole body is moving along. Now, in a limited animation format, um, where you don't have as much budget to play with, I guess, <laughs> or your animators aren't quite as extra, you just get the character rotating their head. Like, you wouldn't get that 
that right there, that little twist of the upper torso to kind of lean them towards the other character, to incline them towards this other character. Like, they're looking to them for reassurance, right? So they're inclining their body towards them a little bit, which is good acting. Um, but in a limited animation format, usually you wouldn't bother animating the whole body for that because you can just kind of rotate the head and you get more or less the same gesture, or at least close enough. Anyway, that was a lot of preamble. Uh, so let's just start, let's start, let's just start at the beginning. Freaking Sun Creature Studios. And what we get at the beginning is this gorgeous bit of effects animation um, with the sand. Like, we get this shot of what seems to be a desert, and then we get the sand of the desert rising up. And this is animated fully on twos, which is, again, like, this is Disney frame rate, basically. Like, this is the kind of frame rate that you'd see if you frame rated your way through Aladdin. And we cut out to this, like, oh, it's not a sand dune in the desert. It's an hourglass where the sand is flowing upwards, huh? Which is very good storytelling that, okay, like, in this one shot with the, uh, the sand in the hourglass rising to the top of the thing, this is very good storytelling. It gives us the immediate, oh, okay, we're dealing with time manipulation. We're, we're dealing with time flowing backwards with, with time being out of sync, with things being manipulated. Cool. That's a very good setup for what's actually going to be happening in the short, which is that... Maybe Cillian is reversing time. Maybe he's messing a little bit with the timelines. He certainly likes to do that. Um, but that's sort of the, the theme of, of Zillian himself. And then we get the first shot of the grand old man. And here again, this is where they could have used limited animation techniques to just like here you can see it's only really the arm and the beard that that's really moving the shoulder isn't moving at all you didn't have to redraw the shoulder some cre you could you could just not have done that but apparently you did redraw the whole character along with this because you're madmen you're crazy people okay fine fine you could have done that but you didn't it's, it's extremely cool and i like you a lot <laughs> i really love that you do that um we get our first shot of zillion himself with this like i really love the hand animation here like cuz you see he raises his hand up, then you get his this full spread out hand, and then there, look how this is such a little detail, but look how the little finger and the ring finger kind of collapse together. And then you get this little bit of rotation. Like the hand just rotates a little bit along its axis so that like the thumb points outwards towards the camera more. So you get this this like this rotational, like he's doing this this circular swoop around the viewing window or whatever the thing is like it's just it's just a gorgeous little piece of hand and hands are difficult to animate um they're difficult to make look good um in smooth motion and this is just this is really nice so i also like the use of lighting like this really dramatic edge lighting that you get around his hand that like that really that sort of hides him it puts him in shadow but it also like gives this dramatic sense of like weight to like when he swoops his hand across it's like oh magical gesture because of the dramatic lighting which i really like then we get this shot, and this is one of the few pieces of 3D animation I believe I have identified. I believe the coins that are floating around here, and again, Sun Creature Studios, a madman, maybe they did, I just hand animated them like this and made them look perfect just to mess with me, but I believe they're 3D animated, and I believe, and, and certainly the magic effects hovering over Zillion's hand here are 3D generated um, effects, because otherwise these people are lunatics um but the flame effects that are following the coins around as they float those i believe are 2d animated certainly that's what they look like and here we get um another little a little bit of of maybe a better example of the limited animation i was talking about than the freaking so here this shot right here what Cillian is doing here is doing this very this this very slow languid motion going on. Like we have the floating coins, we have sort of the billowing in the magical wind of his sleeve and of his beard, and it's, it's like this very slow languid motion, right? So it looks like this, and it has this wonderful fluidity to it. And part of the way that fluidity is achieved is again is not by necessarily. Re uh, animating at 24 frames per second, but what they're doing instead is that they're making sure that some animation is happening more or less at 24 frames per second. So, for example, here, only the 3D effect and the coins are moving. Then here, only, you can see that there's change in Cillian's sleeves. There's change, no change in the hands, but his sleeves are moving. And then here, the coins are moving. And then the coins and the sleeves are moving together. And then you can see here, here finally, the hand moves along with the sleeves. And then as we get here, we get a one frame where only the hand is moving, the coins aren't moving, the sleeves aren't moving. So what, instead of redrawing the entire frame of animation, like the whole window of animation here, instead of making the coins move and the, and the sleeves move and the, the beard move all at the same time, you get this, they take turns, essentially, to move 
um, relative to each other. So you get this, even though not the entire frame is animated at any one time, like at any one time, the whole frame is not animated. But because on any given frame, there's almost always some animation happening, like there's always a little bit of animation happening, you get this. Like this beautiful sense of fluidity, like this this very, very alive, fluid sense of motion created by the animators and the animation directors being really careful about, okay, this frame, this thing moves, this frame, that thing moves, this frame, this thing moves, and making sure to coordinate the rate of movement for each individual piece in the shot to generate the maximum amount of fluidity as the thing moves across the screen. And in motion, like... When you slow it down like this, you, you get like movements like this one where Cillian's hand goes fully from here to there, which is not a very smooth motion at all. But because it's being, essentially it's being masked by everything else in the frame. Oh, that's a lot of video compression. My video coding going a little bit mad there. It's being masked by everything else in the frame doing so much work. Anytime there's a frame where one thing isn't moving, something else is. Like you can see on this frame, Zillion is completely stock still. He's just a static image, but the coins are moving. And here the coins aren't moving, but so much else of Zillion is. And by staggering and managing the movement of the various pieces, you get this absolute gorgeousness of traditional animation. And here's another shot that I really like because it's so subtle. You see that? Like, it's, it's such a little gesture, because all we get here is a close-up on Zillion's eyes. We don't even get his pupils um, to inform our reading of his expression, but look at that. That right there. That little motion, like, as he's lowering his head with the eyes narrow ever so slightly, and you can see his brows furrow just a little bit more. Like, he, he, he kind of clenches up his, his forehead just a little bit more, that extra line, this line lengthening and deepening. You get like that that sense of like he's looking just a little bit harder, right? Like he's 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 taking a slightly harder look. He's concentrating a little bit more. Um, as we get the next shot where we see what he's concentrating so hard on, which is these people walking up the hill um, in Ionia. And again, notice the variability in frame rate. Like the camera is moving on every frame because this is a three D camera that's doing a three D motion. These uh, I believe. Maybe they're not 3D animated, but this is a 3D camera essentially moving, right? So it's moving on every single frame, this movement. But not every single frame features movement from the characters. And you can see here that, like, on this frame, this character over here moves. And then on this frame, but that character over there moves. Then this one moves. Then that one moves. And they, again... Every single shot, every time there's multiple characters in the screen, or every time there's multiple elements in the screen being animated, you can see that characters will move on different frames. Here we have the guy down here. Here we have the person up there. Constantly varying the flow of animation so that everything doesn't move on the same timing. And what you'd get, if everything moved on exactly the same timing, the animation would still look nice. Like, it wouldn't look bad, but it would look slightly more mechanical. It would look slightly more clockwork. It would look a little bit less fluid, and it would look a little bit more stiff um, in, its, in its expression because everything would be moving on the same timing, like clockwork, rather than everything having its own timing and, like, its, its own sense of motion. So here's another shot that's just kind of quietly gorgeous that, like, you kind of don't notice, but once you see it in slow motion, which is this one as this poor... Oh, my freaking God, that's a big hit, man. Jeez. As this Noxine absolutely clocks this poor Ionian. Take a look at how he falls. Like, take a look. Like, look at that line of action as, like, he gets thrown up off his legs by the force of the blow. So you get that line of action right there, like that curved line of action. And that curved line of action then explodes into the frame like this thing is coming at us in our perspective and you can see like his whole body just kind of twisting around like following so you get this curve right here like this this backwards moving curve that just kind of continues into a spin that then rotates the whole character around and then lands him in like oh my god it it goes by so fast right like you barely see it but like when you slow it down man that's again and again this kind of rotating, spinning motion with a character's body, it demands a lot of the animator to understand how to construct this 
so that it looks good in motion, so that it doesn't look like the character gets turned into spaghetti, but that it looks like this is a this is like a character with a consistent physical body who's being like twisted around in an unnatural way, but not that they're turning into like rubber. Um and one of the ways they do that is with squash and stretch, which is not like it's not massively in evidence in this short because it's, it takes a fairly grounded approach. Squash and stretch is a is a cartoon um, technique primarily. It shows up everywhere, but it's a technique that's that's most physically visible in cartoons. And basically, squash and stretch is look at the the spike ball on the end of his flail here. Look how it gets squashed out. Like look how it kind of it kind of distorts and gets kind of flat as he pulls it down to smack the guy on the head, that's a little bit of squash and stretch, where like the, the shape of the thing that's moving gets distorted by the motion that it's engaging in, in order to accentuate the speed and the power of the movement. That's something that you'll see all over the place in like classic Disney cartoons, uh, like Donald Duck and, and Goofy cartoons, you'll see it all over in Looney Tunes cartoons, in more grounded cartoons like this one, like or more grounded animation like this one, where like it's meant to be taken a little bit more seriously than you know Daffy Duck messing around with Porky Pig. Oftentimes there will be there will almost always be squash and stretch, but it tends to be hidden. Like it tends to be fairly subtle and and not shown off um, nearly as much. Um, but it is present, and it's something that's really fun. Like, I always enjoy looking for squash and stretch frames, like, especially the little ones, like, here, where it's just, like, we want to get that, whew, that, like, whew, that big snap of the whip motion as he, like, swings this thing over his head. So what do we do? We give the spike ball a little bit of squash and stretch as it comes down, and then we get this gorgeous flash frame. We can see, again, the spike ball is very distorted in this one moment where it appears. And then the little subtlety of as it lands, boom. Oop, the entire frame is red. That guy is dead. <laughs> Ooh, what a way to go. Anyway, this shot. This shot right here. Okay, so the coins in Cillian's hand are probably 3D animated. And because of that, I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I think also the wheels on this wagon are 3D animated. I think it might be 3D objects rotating because this is a really, really smooth really consistent, very gorgeous 3D rotation in space, and that's really freaking hard to do in hand animation, and yet, when I look at it, I'm not 100% sure that this isn't hand animated, that the crazy people at Sun Creature Studio just went, oh yeah, sure, we'll animate, like, spike wheels rotating. Sure, we'll just do that by hand instead of using 3D animation, which would have been easier and faster. We'll just do that because we're madmen. Okay, sure, why not? Uh, anyway. Another thing that we get from cartoons is smear frames like this one. Um, where you want to get this quick snappy motion of these, like, these things digging into the ground, like, smacking down. So we just, we just smear this thing out completely. And you get that snap as the thing lands down. And here we get a little bit of squash and stretch and a little bit of secondary motion. Because as these things land, like, these things are made of steel, right? You would expect them to be pretty rigid. But take a look. Actually, let me zoom in for that. Take a look at how they wobble and distort as they land. Like, we get the snap down and then... We get that little bit of wobbling in the thing, that little bit of secondary motion, it's called. Um, where, where like... Um, is it called secondary motion? Or am I confusing it with follow-through? It's one or the other. Anyway, we get that, that little bit of extra motion, sort of like... Even though they're, like, these hard steel things, that just adds, that again, that little bit of extra dimensionality of life to the thing as it snaps down. And interestingly, I do believe that this, like the main body of this thing, the city breaker or whatever it is, um, is just like a flat two-dimensional illustration, even including the guy on top. It's just a flat two-dimensional illustration that's just being scaled up as it comes closer and closer. They're just scaling it up from like a central uh, distortion point like down here. They're just scaling that up and then they're animating the moving parts of it, like the wheels, and this thing sort of separately to the rest of the of this flat 2D, 2D drawing, which is like a good way to do it, but it also, because the thing is not hand animated, because it's not wobbling ever, there's no animation boil on it, you also do get the sense of this thing like a building that's coming close, which is also sold really well by the camera angle. Like, notice how, as in the overwhelming presence of Noxus encroaches on the shores of Ionia, as, as we're meant to be like, oh god, this is bad, we're like, this is terrifying, this is scary. We are positioned in a place, like, essentially lying 
on our backs in the sand on the beach looking up at this overwhelming towering thing. Like, the horizon line is all the way down here. So everything in the frame, every Noxian soldier, everything that happens is above us. We're staring up at this overwhelming thing. And that's a small thing um, from, from, like, the director to communicate to the audience like, how should you feel about the Noxians showing up? Imagine instead if we had, like, a completely bird's-eye view of it. Like, where they just, these little, if we were, like, two and a half miles up from a bird's-eye view looking down, even though they're, like, oh, yeah, there's lots of Noxians on the beaches, everything would look kind of small and distant. And it wouldn't look scary in the same way that it does when you see this huge, looming, towering thing encroaching towards you, snapping down its, like, spiky vine to the beaches, like, <laughs> here is Noxus, despair, pitiful Ionians. Which is, which is a sense that we need, because we, as we transition into looking at the, these two battle bards here, it's like, oh, shit, like, that... <laughs> You're like, oh, you might be fucked. Oh, shit, it's Noxus. This is bad. Like, we need to be in their headspace. So what we're seeing, we get this. Is we're essentially seeing this thing the way that it feels for these guys to see it. This is overwhelming. This is overpowering. This is huge. This is dangerous. We're screwed. We're fucked. Noxus is here, and we're all going to die. Which is what they communicate in this next frame. is like shock and, and like fear and despair. And then... Yo -yo 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 I do like that they... Okay, so the face, I should explain. The face that the Noxus is launching from the City Breaker, that's because in Ionia, all over the place, there are rocks just lying around with faces carved into them. Like, this, when Noxus arrives in Ionia, and they're like, we need something to throw around in our City Breaker catapult thing, that they'll just pick up a big face rock and, and throw that at people. But it's like, it's an Ionian rock. It's not Noxus haven't taken the time to carve a face into it, um, I don't think. Um, but one thing I want, I want you to pay attention to here is, again, we see that little bit of cartoony distortion being employed very subtly to sell the power of emotion. I think this should be close enough that we can see it. Yep. There we go. Pay attention to the bowl of, of the catapult here. You see that? You see that little, like, it, it sort of, all of a sudden it sort of deflates the moment that the rock has left it. Yoink! And that, again, is all about selling, like, you can blink and you'll miss it when we play that back at full speed, right? Like, you can barely see it. But it's there just to provide that little bit of, like, ka feeling, that, that little bit of snap to the rock being thrown across the heavens. And you barely see it, like, you consciously, you don't see it at all when you watch this animation in motion, but it adds to the feel. It adds to the feeling. Um, and it's, the, again, those little touches, that's the kind of stuff that I'm so obsessed with, just kind of finding when I view these animations. Let's see, The Rock 2. Okay, so The Rock, it seems... I need to zoom in on this, because I need to know. I need to know. You're not that You're not that insane, are you, Sun Creature? You're not, you're not that kind of a madman, are you? Okay, no, no, no. Okay, they copy-pasted The Rock. <laughs> the Rock is copy-pasted. Um, at least until it reaches the apex of the throw. At which point, uh, somewhere around up here, let's go to follow it. There. Here they begin to hand animate it, and they hand animate the rotation of this thing, which again, that's really hard. But again, an, an animator looks at all the craggy, scraggly surfaces of this rock, and begins to rotate them in 3D space, with no help whatsoever from a 3D engine to calculate those rotations for them. And it's a small thing, but I genuinely find being able to do that, like, especially like a completely rigid object, like, because when, when you're dealing with, you're animating like a, an organic person or a character or an animal or whatever, you can kind of fudge things a little bit. Like, they can distort, they can kind of blah, blah, blah. You can, you can break the model a little bit. You can, you can mess a little bit with, the, with like the, the shape language of it, but when you're animating something which is a solid object, like what's like it's a metal object or a rock, or like something that is completely rigid that cannot be distorted without make, looking weird, you really have to be good at what you do in order to get that rotation to work. And again, just just impressive work from the Sun Creature animators to rotate this rock with these really weird, distinct features so well in 3D space. Absolutely gorgeous. Also, 
Is it just me or does that look, the rock look like it's judging the people it's about to land on? Like it looks like it's looking at and go, ugh, you wore that outfit to the skirmish? Uh, really? <laughs> and a lovely transition here. Um, because we get along with the rock, we get these arrows flying in. So this arrow does a flash, right? It does a flash frame like this. And then that flash frame transitions us into the arrows striking the shield and like knocking this poor guy to the ground. As time slows down, and here, <clears throat> as we get this slowdown effect, right? Like as Cillian, maybe Cillian, but something or other is slowing down time for us. Here, on every single frame, something is moving. And on every single goddamn frame, this little moth butterfly thing is moving. Like, that's that's moving on every goddamn frame. Our character is moving on every other third frame? Yeah, on every third frame, pretty much, the character is moving. But there's always something moving in shot. And that's kind of necessary, um when you're dealing with, like, doing this kind of slowdown effect, when you're doing a slowdown effect, you have to increase the frame rate. Because the thing that our eyes identify as slow motion is that the small, tiny motions of everything on screen become more and more visible. So in full motion, it's looked like this. But when we slow it down, what we see is as it we begin the slowdown, on every frame, the, the butterfly is animated, but the character himself is only animated, like, on a, on a few of the frames. But as time slows down more and more... If you pay attention to the little movements of the hair in the background, he begins to move at a higher frame rate as well. Like, more frames begin to have changes in his animation as well to communicate that slow down where everything starts moving more smoothly. Which, again, just gorgeous work from the animators. And then we end on this thing, which is a painted frame. Like, this is there's, there's absolutely no animation happening in, in these frames right here, except a little bit of distortion. Like, you can see a little bit of distortion in, like, the smoke and fire. And a little bit of relative motion of the, the fireball to the background. But there's no, like, hand-drawn animation. This is all just kind of distortions in the space. Which gives it this this moment, like, this sense of a moment that's frozen in time, right? Like this, we have frozen this this point completely in time like it was a painting. And then Cillian is like, uh, oh, darn it, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> like an adorable old man. And can I just say, I prefer Zillian with his hair down. Like... Like, Zillion with his, his ridiculous onion hair has always been kind of an outdated character in League of Legends. Like, he's always looked very silly in League of Legends. Like, even in his updated splash art that looks more reasonable, like, his in-game character model has always looked silly. I like him with his hair down. Like, that, that, that to me communicates the idea of, like, ancient wizard who was, like, maybe been neglecting going to the hairdresser for the past two and a half thousand years. <laughs> Better than that big onion hair thing that he's got otherwise got going on, but uh, I don't think uh, Riot is going to change it anytime soon, unfortunately. Now, hang on, because I need to check for animation boil. Like, I, I need to check for boiling on the lines. Um, Because, Sun Creature, you didn't... Right? No. Okay, good. They didn't do it this time. Okay. <laughs> I thought for a second maybe they redrew every single frame of animation for Zillion floating here, but no. Here again, we're using a little bit of limited animation technique, which is, as Zillion is floating here, we get lots of motion on his sleeves, on his beard, on, like, um, on, like, his coat, on the, on the, um, on the coins that are moving around, but the actual cross-legged position of his legs and, like, his, and, like, his pants and his, and his hands sitting there, those are all... Like, they, they copy-paste those from frame to frame this time. <laughs> Saving the labor a little bit. Until... Here. When Zillion drops, like when he loses his concentration and drops out of his magic meditation thing or whatever, that's when we return to complete full animation as Zillion drops his entire body weight down. And I really, again, this is such a nice motion because you can kind of see... Like, as he lands, he lands first with his butt. Like, here his butt has collided with the ground, it's not moving any further. But still, even though his butt has collided, you get this... You can see his whole upper body, his chest kind of collapses down a little bit as he catches 
the weight of his own head as it's falling down as well. You can see like the muscles straining to catch and kind of return him to a seated position, which again, like it, this is not like rocket science animation. This is this is basic good character animation, but man, it's just nice. It's just well done. It's just well executed because again, this kind of thing, like the Aurelia thing I gushed about, it demands a real understanding of the physicality of the human body, like the way muscles and bone and sinew catches on itself to sort of to give us this because like we don't move like robots we don't move stiffly we move like sacks of meat we move like sacks of water with like with like some rigid trusses inside them to sort of hold them upright and like capturing that motion so well it's so nice and i also love the way that like the beard like because when he's up and doing his meditation thing all of his hair is kind of puffed out right it's all kind of billowing and floating and, and puffing out you can see that really here like how the beard is sort of really big and puffed out but then as he lands as the magic goes away notice how everything just kind of it just kind of falls down and becomes the sheet of of hair instead of this like big billowing sort of dramatic thing it just it kind of loses all its life and becomes much more inert and and restful. Again, which which is just using the hair of the character sort of really well to to literalize the internal, like the the magic that's animating him internally being externalized as secondary motion in the hair and the beards. And it's just, ah, it's very good. It's very good. You see that? You see how here they're here again they're using that differential we talked about that with with like the shot of his hand and the coins rotating the way that they're using differential animation like differential animation speeds to make the whole fluidity of his motion feel better so that even though on plenty of frames like here we see pretty much the entire body moving right except the hair seems to be copy pasted at this point and then here you can see only really Little, little bit of motion in his face, a little bit of motion in his hair, a little bit of motion on his arm, but most of him isn't really moving. And so you get this sort of like making sure that each bit of the character moves when it needs to in order to communicate the idea. You can see that here as well, where like only really his hair is moving. Let's zoom out from that, actually. Only really his hair is moving, but there's almost always something moving on every single frame. There's almost always something moving. And that's what gives the whole scene like that beautiful sense of fluidity. It's just so good. Like it's just this is just really good animation. This is just people who know their goddamn craft doing it really, really well. And I love it. And they're also doing some fun things with Cillian's um mouth and lip. Um because you have, like, something you can do with bearded characters, especially when you have these big mustaches and you have these big uh, lower beards, you can you can kind of mess with, with, like, their their mouth and make their lower lip a little bit more articulated. And this, like, this shot in particular kind of gives me a little bit of Link, my boy! <laughs> vibes from Zelda CD. But, like, in a good way, it has, like, that a little bit of that goofy energy a little bit. Like, as he sort of recollects his train of thought, it's like... Like, oh, time is a construct that's only dangerous to those who fear... Oh, uh, uh, I forgot where I was. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, this is where I was. And then he transitions, like, he snaps instantly back into magic super wizard mode. Like, goes Super Saiyan right in front of us. But he transitions from this sort of adorable, kind of kindly grandpa old man energy. Like... Oh, sir, sir, yes, I remembered where I was. Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. I am the time wizard who controls all of space and time. Like, you get this transition from one zillion, kindly old grandfather, to the other zillion, lord and master of the immaterium, like, manipulator of magic and the very fabrics of, of fate and destiny. And that transition is managed so well because they do, when he's not in wizard mode, they give him that little bit of, of like, cheerful, silly energy so that they can snap him out of it and turn him into the magic mage once again, which is, like, it's, it's just a very nice acting choice. Anyway, uh, what do I want to talk about last? Oh, I, um, I, okay, uh, more smear frames, so... And these two characters are whipping out their flutes, right? Like they're whipping out the flutes because they want to do the magic thing um, in order to uh, drive the Noxians back. And here again, you can see the characters moving on different frames. And then sometimes they move in the same frame, and then sometimes only one character moves, sometimes only one, the other character moves. 
And one thing that's being done here is if you take a look at this spinning motion of the flute. Again, let me zoom in. Yoink. Take, a no take notice of the spinning motion of the flute here. Because what we have is actually plenty of times in this bit of animation where, like, the character is not moving, especially, like, here. We have, like, a, a three-frame window where nothing happens with this character whatsoever. Where he's just kind of standing still. And what we what the animators do here is they use these smear frames. You can see that little smear that's being applied to the flute that, that accentuates the spinning motion. Which means that even though the character is moving at a relatively lower frame rate. Um, because you have these little smears kind of bridging the gap between frames. Like make, making sure that even though nothing in the... Uh, even though the character isn't actually moving, there's still motion present in the drawing. Like there's still these little motion lines giving you a sense of motion. It bridges the gap and makes the whole thing look just so much more fluid. And it's gorgeous. Like it works so well. And then we get... Oh, hang on. I'm moving the wrong thing around. Here, we get the plant tentacles from hell. And here we get a really clear demonstration of, like, using um, different frame timings in order to create uh, smoothness and fluidity in the image. Because one of my favorite details of this shot is, like, you look at the background, you see the little Noxians being thrown up in the air, like, Oh, God! Ah! <laughs> and they are being used along with... You can see here, for example, only the Noxians move. Then here, only that bit of plant and these particular rocks. Not all of the rocks, but these particular rocks only move. And then we get this frame where these three tentacles and some of the rocks that are some of the dirt and stuff that's attached to them and the Noxians move. And there's this constant like timing back and forth of like make this thing move, now make this thing move, now make this thing move, now make this thing move. Constantly being used to increase the smoothness with which everything is happening in the frame. And it works so well. Like, it's it's just it's just a gorgeous little shot of the plant tentacles, like, bursting out of the ground, grabbing onto this thing and just crushing the hell out of it. Like, yoink! <laughs> oh, that's really good. And the last shot I want to talk about um, is the one of Malphite rising out of the ground, because here we see something interesting happen otherwise. So we've talked about how a lot of the animation that's happening here in, the, in this thing, animating on twos, animating on threes, right? Like, it's, it's a fairly rapid frame rate, like 12 frames per second, 9 frames per second, that kind of thing. But here, Malphite, because he's so huge, because he's this giant mountain rising up of the, out of the ground, he has to have this slow, ponderous energy that you get from, like, huge things that always look like they're moving slowly just because of the sheer scale and size. So how is he animated? So on every single frame, every single one, we get the smoke clouds expanding around him. Like, you can see that they're always expanding and moving, but Malphite himself... One... One. One. He's pretty much animated on fours. Um, with a little bit of differentiation, like there's a little bit, of, sometimes he moves a little bit smoother. But he's animated on this like relatively slow frame rate. Relative to everything else that's sort of like happening around him in the image. And that's aids in giving him this sense of being this overwhelmingly massive, slow moving, huge thing that's encroaching on the scene. And that's just it's just really well put together, really well done. And we'll end again on this like, it's just some absolutely gorgeous acrobatic animation of Irelia. Like, man! That looks good. And it has that dancer vibe that she really needs to have because that's what she is. She's a battle dancer. I still don't really like the spikes on her weird half dancer half armor design thing like it looks like it would poke her constantly like this if she bends over she's just gonna stab herself in like the in like the hip or the lower gut or whatever but man looks gorgeous in motion look at that spin man that's good oh, i love 2d animation like riot games please just commission sun creature studios to do all of the things just just let, just let them do many things like you have arcane come you can give them a series like let let them have a series but they just, I don't care what it's about, just at least have them animate people doing things. It's like with the ro they spin around themselves and they rotate and plant tentacles. There's plant tentacles coming out of the ground. Just give them a series where they do that. That that would rule. 
That would be really cool because, oh god, I like, I like watching their animation because it's so freaking good. Anyway, this is, this is enough. That's enough. That's enough. I've kept it to 45 minutes-ish <laughs> this time around. I could have gone on for two hours, believe me, but I'm trying not to just go in circles and repeat myself too much over and over again. I'm sure I have anyway, but... <laughs> right. Um... Yeah, I'm supposed to self-promote. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a Patreon. I have a, no, wait, like, comment, subscribe first. That's the first thing you go. Like, comment, subscribe. Bell icon. Because you need people to do the thing to make the usual algorithm happy. And then you say, I also have a Patreon, a merchandise store, and a tip jar. You can use them if you want to support the channel directly. Help me pay my rent and stuff like that. You can do that if you want to. You don't have to. That's the second thing. Then the third thing is I point to say I have a shorts channel where I do little short videos. I'm going to upload some hot takes about some of the new skins that are coming out. So if you want to see 60 second videos from me, you can subscribe to that. And I also have a Let's Play channel where I video play video games because that is what you do on a Let's Play channel. Um, so you, can, you can subscribe to that if you want to. And then I think I'm done. I think that's all of it. Yes. Which is when I do my sign off, where, which sounds like this. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to wear a mask and wash your hands. Take the vaccine when it comes and try to act in solidarity with those who are working to make the world a better place. And then that's the end of the video. And then I show um, some other videos on screen that you can click on uh, so that you can give me more views and engagement because that's, that's how my job works. Um, this one, I just want to talk about animation all day.